Hi subbies! I recorded this video as a shorter version of the presentation I did on Sunday uh, because I wanted something to do specific for YouTube that uh, introduces new people to me. Um, for those of you who don't know, this past week was my two year anniversary as a VTuber um, since uh, my debut. As such, I made this presentation to introduce you to me and to talk a little bit about myself. So I hope you enjoy it. So let's start with some basic facts. Uh, first of all, Dami is my OC and the avatar I use to interact with my audience through streaming. I have mostly written this presentation about him, but there will be parts where I start talking about me as well. Um, I'll try and identify those as we go on. Uh, to start with, Dami's full name is Dominic Wolf, um, and both he and I go by Dami. Um, I used to separate Dom and Dami, but uh, most most of the people I know now call me Dami and not Dom, so I just I respond to Dami more frequently. But typically speaking, um, the short version of Dominic Wolf is Dami. Um, some of his other nicknames are Dom, Dami with a Y, Dami with an IE, Doggy, Puppy, Mutt Boy, and there's more if you get to know me or him better. Uh, Dom is 21 years old. He is a male. Uh, his species is a dog boy or canid, and he is the uh, he is a purebred Doberman Pinscher. That is his dog breed. Um, you can see this on screen, uh, but his body type is athletic. He has six pack firm abs and toned biceps. His uh, shoulders are kind of broad, but they're not terribly broad. Um, his thighs are a little bit on the thick side, and he has a long flowing tail, which kind of represents a wolf's. Uh, you'll notice his ears are a little bit unique as well. Those also have some wolf uh, DNA in them. Um, Dominic loves showing off the core of his uh, body, and the most powerful part of his body is his legs. And he can really kick if you make him angry. Uh, Dom is 5 foot 4 inches. Um, he's five foot six in boots, and he and I don't have a complex, so don't even suggest it. Um, Dom is a mercenary contracted with the Canars Vanguard Charter. He is also a professional dominant submissive for the Princess Room, and he's independent as well. Um, and he's a puppy play specialist for Wolf Magazine, as well as being a latex slash leather model. Uh, he's also a performer and creator on Only Wands, a pornographic website made by Canids for Canids. Uh, and Dami lives in Cana City. Um, my go live tag is hashtag WolfVTubing. Uh, my safe for work art tag is hashtag DamiComs. And my not safe for work art tag is hashtag DamiComs. Um, my viewer names are subbies, and that means submissive insert identity here ease. That's typically how I will address the start of each stream or each video, just so uh, we're clear on that. The theme of my channel is a dungeon primarily inspired by BDSM related themes and ideas. Uh, most of the chatting screens you'll see will either be in my dungeon, my living room, or my bedroom. Uh, some of my themes include chains, latex, straps, zippers, whips, paddles, lace, and rope. Um, there's some pretty strong puppy play elements throughout, including collars, leashes, paw prints, spikes, and studs. Uh, both I and Dami consider pet play to be like our biggest thing uh specifically puppy play so like there's going to be a lot of puppy play references in all of my content uh dog him dom himself fashions himself as a dog tamer um so there's going to be a lot of references to that so if you're puppy you feel right at home here um as a Doberman dominant, a lot of my flavoring will cater towards the dominant side of Dom's personality, but please remember that Dom is a switch and don't get too carried away. There's a lot of um, people, like on Twitter especially, who forget sometimes that Dom is on both sides of the BDSM spectrum and not just one. Uh, so I do want to bear that in mind as we're going through this presentation and just remind you guys that Dom is a switch. Uh, my vibes are dark and sexy as well as comfy and consensual. You'll see alternating fancy themes or grunge-like aesthetics. A lot of neon backlightings, accents, glows will be present throughout my designs as well. Uh, I mainly stream turn-based games. Occasionally I stream horror games and visual novels depending on interest. I really like mysteries, but I like good uh, adventures too. So here's some of the stuff that I like to do. Um, my favorite video games are turn-based RPGs. That's pretty much the focus of my channel for the most part. 
Um, we're currently playing Trails from Zero, Chained Echoes, Chrono Cross. I've played a bunch of others in the past. Uh, my favorite RPG is Hajimari no Kiseki. Um, it's coming stateside this year as Trails into Reverie. Some other favorites of mine include Umineko no Nakukroni, uh, Trails of Cold Steel 4, Control, Devil May Cry 5, Zero Escape, I, The Somnium Files, and more. Uh, some of my favorite kinds of music include metal, metalcore, video game music, alternative rock. Um, I love 90s music. I grew up with 90s music. Uh, I still listen to a lot of 90s music. Um, just about anything hot and heavy, though, will get my chest pumping and motivate me pretty well. Um, my favorite kinds of food used to be Asian food for the most part. I'm really fond of chicken, just about any type of dish with chicken in it. Uh, but recently, I have had to go gluten-free uh, due to some dietary health concerns. So chances are I probably can't eat a lot of what I used to like. Dom loves sweets. So um, anything with Dom in it probably features sweets or oranges. Um, he is a big eater of whatever the hell he wants to, whenever the hell he wants to do it. Um, he's very dog-brained, so, yeah. Uh, I also love to write. Many of my writings are featured on my AO3 or inside my Discord server, most of them focusing on BDSM relationships, typically depicting two male-presenting individuals or male-presenting and female-presenting individuals. Uh, I really love writing things like uh, Femdom and Puppy Play. I really enjoy hardcore BDSM scenes, uh, love writing pain play scenes, etc, etc. So if you are a fan of those things, you will definitely find yourself at home here. Uh, I'm extremely fond of fetish writing. I also use these writings to script my audios too. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation when we discuss uh, my fansly. So here's some of Dom's outfits. Um, the first one we have is we have Summer Dommy, uh, which I use for some of my summer events. Uh, we have Spring Bunny Dommy, which I uh, used during an Easter reveal stream when I played Final Fantasy XIV. I also use this a lot on joystick. Uh, we have Winter Reindeer Dommy. This is the outfit I switched to during the winter. If you watched any of my streams like uh, a couple months ago, for example, you might have seen this outfit a lot. I still use it in current time. Um, I think the most recent stream I used it on was uh, for the game High on Life, which uh, I streamed for a little while and just kind of lost interest in it. Um, and we also have Fall Hoodie Dami, which is a outfit I use in the fall. I stopped using that at the end of October, I believe, this year. Uh, we migrated to Winter Reindeer Dami in November. Uh, some of my outfits are seasonal. Not all of them are seasonal. Most of them nowadays are not. When we first started out, we did a lot of seasonal outfits because I stream alongside my um, my uh, companion and uh, partner, Melon Rose. And for a while, Melon's brand was very seasonal with regards to what outfits she would make. So she would make them for me as well. But we've kind of verged away from that. Here's some of my occasional outfits. Uh, I have a leather biker outfit that I use on some streams. Just kind of depends on what I'm streaming or what the vibe is. Uh, this is my default outfit. We call it Hardcore Play. It's the one in front of you right now. I got this outfit for my birthday. The concept for this outfit was made by uh, Blondes Art on uh, on Twitter, um, whose uh, at you can see on screen. Um, I have a submissive puppy outfit, which is mostly a wetsuit, but also a latex bodysuit. Um, I use this a lot for subathons. Um, and I also use it for, uh, for games involving water or just references to like water play and things like that, water sports and like, um, this is my mercenary boy outfit. This outfit's pretty, pretty horny charged. Um, I use this for things like monster hunter or just games where like I'm playing as an adventurer or stuff like that. I think it fits that vibe really well. And this is our latex leotard outfit. This is an outfit we made um, because I really wanted something like uh, in the vibe of like racing suits and stuff like that. I think this outfit is really cool. Um, I use it a lot just depending on what the vibe of the stream is. Sometimes I'll use it just because I, I like switching to it. Um, it also includes a flag. It includes a puppy play flag and an ace flag. Um, so if you ever see me using that outfit, uh, make sure to ask about enabling that and check that out. One of the other ways that I stream is I stream as uh, another version of Dom, um, which is known as Red Dommy to my audience. Um, this version of Dom is uh, a lot more feral, a lot more dominant. Um, his vibes are a lot more oriented around like pain and stuff like that. 
Um, he's pretty hardcore, and uh, he is one of the main characters in a story called To Make an Alpha, which we will talk about later in this presentation. But this is his current default outfit. This outfit is uh, got a couple of different variations to it. As you can see, we have a full suit. We have a vest with no pants. Um, there's a jacket with no pants. There's pants, no jacket. There's a lot of different variations that I'll use depending on how I'm feeling. So uh, make sure to request whichever one is your favorite. And this is our most recent Red Dommy outfit. Um, this is for the game Chrono Cross. We've been playing Chrono Cross every Sunday on the Dog Boy Sunday streams that I've been doing uh, with my partner Turtle. And um, Turtle designed me a Chrono Cross outfit uh, in the style of Nikki in Chrono Cross. This is a reference to Nikki's outfit. So we have one guitar version and one without. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about Dami's likes and dislikes. Dami and I have some of the same likes and dislikes, um, but some of his are more catered towards his character as opposed to some of mine, which are more catered to your my personality. So Dami likes bones, uh, musky scents, chicken, sweating, cute submissives, leather, latex, chains, head pats, pets. Uh, he loves ear rubs, he loves stomach rubs, he loves armpit rubs, he loves abs and stomach rubs, and he loves oranges. Uh, he will eat them whole. He loves snacking on oranges. Um, Dami's dislikes include seaweed, sea smells, sea food, uh, pushy people, abusive people, dishonesty, disloyalty, bad submissives, bad brats, abusive dominance, fake dominance, animal abusers, fake people, people who don't know the differences between sub and bottom, and unnecessary callouts. That's not to say uh, callouts themselves are unnecessary, it's to say I get very annoyed when someone expects to have someone else cancelled because someone was mean to somebody else in a collab. I feel like that is a personal thing and should not be taken public and have other people to react on it. Because Dom is a character primarily inspired by fantasy games like Final Fantasy XIV and uh, some turn-based games as well, uh, he has some battle statistics. I've given him a couple of different variations with weapons. Um, so we're going to talk about some of that now. His main weapon is a greatsword. It goes by the name of Vanguard Blade. Uh, he has an SS plus ranking with it. A lot of these rankings came from games like uh, Fire Emblem, for example. Um, they're just fun flavoring, so uh, don't take this too seriously. Um, his sub weapon is his fist. He's really good at punching things. Um, his alternative weapon is a katana or a longsword that goes by the name of Thirst Seeker. This is a direct reference to part of his Final Fantasy XIV canon. Uh, where he had an alt class as a samurai. Some of his other weapons include an axe, which he has a C plus rating with, uh, pistols, rifles, other guns, C minus, F on FPS games. That's a reference to how much I suck at those. Uh, bows, F. He has a D in ranged weapons. He has a not applicable in magic because he's afraid of it. Um, his ranking with staves is a C minus. He has a B-plus ranking with his fangs. He mostly uses those sexually. He loves biting his submissives. Um, A-plus rating with his claws. Loves clawing his playmates. Um, and he has an A-plus S rating with whips. He absolutely loves using whips on his subs. Uh, but sometimes he'll just use them for fun too. Um, just depending on what he's doing. Uh, mostly he prefers to subdue people using his body strength. Dom is very physically oriented. Um, he loves to wrestle, grapple, he loves to put people in headlocks, loves to grab people by their necks, loves to choke people if they want it, um, and more. Uh, he's not beyond giving a sub a quick cup check to put them in line either. We're going to take a small break from talking about Dom and talk a little bit about my personality. Uh, please note though that some of this is true for Dommy as well. So generally speaking, uh, I'm pretty incapable of betraying my feelings. I wear most stuff on my sleeve, so if I'm bothered by something, chances are it'll probably show. Um, I typically talk about these subjects in my stream a lot, but I can go on tangents or get carried away a lot, so please be wary of this. Uh, a lot of the time, I do go on like long-winded conversations about different things. It's not rude to just tell me, hey, Dom, uh, maybe we should change the subject, or hey, Dom, maybe we should, you know, get back to the game at hand or something, because there are times where, like, my attention span will wander and I forget that I've been talking about something for a while. I'm pretty stoic and easygoing most of the time. I don't get startled very easily unless I'm playing horror games, and I'm usually pretty quick to regain my demeanor after I do. Uh, I have a hard time crying most of the time. I'm not incapable, it just takes a lot. I'm extremely patient. 
I tend to take my time with games because I like to do everything if I can and within reason. So I hope you will, can be patient with me. Most of that in refers to like side quests, for example. Uh, I really like doing side quests in turn-based role-playing games or like optional bosses if I can do them, etc. and so on. I really like playing games with friends, so I'll do random multi-streams and collabs at times. It makes me happy to be invited to play something with somebody. Uh, unfortunately, I've been traumatized out of doing random collabs. At the start of my VTuber career, I did a lot of them. At this point in my VTuber career, I have pretty much seen them used as weapons, and I am not exactly about that. So if we don't know each other and you want to collab with me, please send your request to the email on screen or um, the description of the video and we can discuss it professionally. Uh, when you send your request, please make sure that you have what game you want to play in mind. There's a big pet peeve of mine when somebody approaches me for a collab but expects me to figure out all the details. Like, don't do that. I will probably reject you immediately just because it's a lot of pressure on me to figure out something uh, last minute that this person wants to do. So if you have a game that you feel like you and I would really get along with or like would really fit our brand, stuff like that, I am not close to that idea. Um, like, I won't tell you no because of it, uh, but I just want to discuss it in a more professional capacity. I don't want to discuss it in DMs. We can start DMing after you email me if we, like, establish a rapport, etc., etc. Um, so please just make sure that you send an email. It's the easiest way to get a response from me. My biggest initiative as a streamer is to make sure everyone watching me or interacting with me has a good time. Sometimes I don't do very well at this, but I'm always receptive to feedback. And that's, like, for anything. Um, as long as you give me useful feedback, I will generally be receptive of it. If you just tell me something sucked, that's not really helpful. Um, it really just says that you didn't like whatever it was, and that's totally fine, but it doesn't really help me improve. Uh, so how would someone describe me? Um, I would say I'm brash, lewd, pretty free of any kind of mental filter. Uh, I tend to say things that are on my mind in whatever way I please without caring too much about how they make me look or what people think. Uh, most of the time, this takes the form of unfiltered horny posting. Uh, I'm very open about my kinks and fetishes, so just an FYI, we'll talk about that shortly. Uh, my lewdness can be pretty wild, but I keep it pretty clean for the most part on streams. I still crack, crack lewd jokes here or there, and curse, and make lots of references to being fucked publicly by insert thing here, but for anything else you'll have to visit my Twitter, Fansly, Joystick, or our community Discord. I'm also really, 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 really kinky. Like, super kinky. It's not uncommon for me to see a character on screen and talk about how hard I simp for them. I love kink and BDSM, and I have such a strong passion for kink positivity. You'll really not see me be tasteless on stream, but I'll absolutely be free and open about various sexual and kinky remarks, so please bear that in mind while watching me. Uh, case in point, we were playing Resident Evil 4 yesterday, and I made a lot of lewd jokes about Leon. Um, I just kind of do that for characters that I find attractive on screen. If it makes you uncomfortable, I totally understand. Um, if I'm taking it too far, you can let me know. Um, but generally speaking, I am pretty mindful of what I'm saying to make sure it doesn't make anybody uncomfortable. Um, but I am always open to feedback on that. Uh, this also shows up in much of my branding. If male etchy or nudity makes you uncomfortable, please keep in mind it is still my right to display Dom however I please and respect that. I'll never do anything to force discomfort on you. I've had a couple of viewers who will come into chat and tell me to like cover up Dom's tits or like his thighs or something. and. I'm not going to do that um, because I present Dom the way I want to present him and the way I want him to be seen. And I'm personally comfortable with um, with depictions of male nudity and stuff like that. So if you're not, totally get it. But please respect my right to depict my character however I want to. Uh, are you introverted or extroverted? I and Dom are really big introverts. That's probably kind of hard to believe for Dom with the way he looks. but. Uh, we, I wouldn't call myself shy, but I am socially oblivious, and I tend to do most things without recognizing social conventions. Uh, for Dom, this takes the form of being half-naked of the time, usually to a fault of not recognizing it. Sometimes, however, this can be intentional. Dom is a very flirty and very homoerotic character, despite being ace and demi, so please bear that in mind. Just because I'm socially awkward doesn't mean I can't be sexual, too. How talkative am I? Uh, since my debut in 2021, I've made it my biggest goal to be more vocal and more talkative on stream. Generally speaking, I like to fill dead air, but I got a lot of bad advice starting out, and sometimes that just becomes me talking about whatever comes to mind. Um, that said, I really love keeping an eye on conversations in chat and talking with chat and helping them engage more with my content. Um, 
But if I know something about a game or series, I also really like to give backstory or lore or talk about the narrative in a more abstract, synthetic way. Like with turn-based games, for example. Um, there are some I know a lot about, so I'll talk about them while playing the game. Uh, also for turn-based games, I might be more reactionary and not so dynamic, especially if it's something I haven't played before, um, just because I'm trying to take it all in. If I have played it before, um, you might see me comment more, you might see me be a little bit more talkative, because I know where the story is going, I don't have to pay as much attention to the story, um, but I might like talk more about the lore, or, like the backstory, or like foreshadow things, etc, etc. I also really like to scream, like literally for any reason at all. I, I just really like screaming. It, it's fun. I don't know. Sometimes I'll be a little bit over dramatic about things on stream, but you know. Yeah. All right. So this section might be a little much for people watching. Um, if you want to mute this video, make sure to skip ahead to the next section. We're just going to go into some of the themes, uh, the sexual themes, interests, and concepts of my channel. I understand this might be material that some viewers may find a little bit uncomfortable. So you, by all means, do not have to watch it if you find this uncomfortable. Uh, all right, so let's start with sexual preferences. Um, I am asexual and demisexual, so I don't really have one. Uh, most of the time I flirt with a lot of people. I have a partner and a couple of very devoted kink friends. Uh, for the sake of Dom's canon, his partners tend to be predominantly male, but Dom doesn't actually believe in gender discrimination. He'll play with literally anyone who comes across his doorstep. Um, I said it earlier in the uh, presentation that I'm a big fan of Femdom. I love writing Femdom. Uh, Dom is no exception to that. Dom has a character by the name of Luna who in his canon he gets pegged by on a pretty regular basis. Um, his dungeon is led by a uh, someone he kind of has a relationship with but not so much by the name of uh, by the name of Malti. And Malti is she basically treats Dom as her puppy. Um, his uh, designation is he's a switch. Uh, his fetishes, he has a lot of fetishes, and so do I. Um, some of those include leather, latex, puppy play, scent play, BDSM, armpits, boots, anal war uh, whipping, spanking, stomping, crushing, rope, chains, sensory deprivation. There's so many fetishes, and Dom and I mostly share the same ones equally. Uh, if you want to learn more about Dom's kinks, you can totally check out his F list, which is on, stre uh, on screen. Um, or you can, uh, you can hit me up for it if you're somebody who, like, wants to make fan art for Dom or something like that, and you just want to know what Kinks he's into. I am always fine with sharing it. Um, are you more dominant or more submissive? Good question. Switches all tend to have a lean, and Dom's no exception. I'm generally more submissive than not, but through streaming with Dom as my avatar, I've learned to lean a lot more into my dominant side. Uh, most of the messages you see written for my content on Twitter, for example, will be written with a dominant tone. Uh, this is because my audience is primarily built up of submissive personalities. I, in general, have been studying BDSM for approximately half my life. I was one of those kids growing up who was way too curious and indulged far too much on the internet, and before I knew it, I learned I really liked femdom, which was my gateway into kink. As such, I know a lot about the scene. I'm a practitioner of BDSM as a dominant IRL, too. Um, so a lot of my messages will be told from the perspective of the dominant. I don't like that I said IRL, but it just kind of came out of my mouth, so we're going to roll with it. Are you shaven? No. Neither I nor Dom shave our privates or our armpits. Dom has a really visible treasure trail on his crotch, too. It's kind of one of the favorite things he likes to show off, and I like to show off of him. So you'll see it in a lot of his outfits. But in terms of dynamics, Dom really doesn't allow his subs to have body hair. Uh, it's a dominant thing for him to have body hair because he's heavily into musk play. So have a sub get off to his scent really turns him on. Um, speaking of Dom and his dynamics, he actually has a couple of codes that he expects his subs to obey. Uh, that's one of them. There's a couple of more. Uh, I usually talk about these in a lot of the fiction that I write, like with To Make an Alpha, for example, or um, just different stories that I come up with. So um, Piercings. Dom's nipples are pierced. Sometimes this is forgotten in some of his outfits, so if you see me forgetting it, please smack me. Uh, tattoos. Dom has a paw print tattooed on his right ass cheek. It will be visible in quite a few outfits. This is also a detail I forget about, uh, about sometimes, so please smack me if you see it missing. And as for underwear preferences, Dom has his own brand in his canon, so he tends to wear wolf branded leather jocks. He's also fond of thongs, g-strings, freeballing, trunks, and more. Personally, I tend to be more fond of briefs myself because I have a couple of health issues. However, I am more than happy to rock jocks and trunks while streaming. 
that's the end of the sexual stuff so thank you guys so much for bearing with me i really appreciate that uh next we're going to talk a little bit more about where you can find me online so here are all of my socials um most of the time my handle is either going to be dommy wolf or dommy wolf vt if dommy wolf is already taken but these are all the things that i focus on at present i have a twitter uh, i have a community discord the youtube that you're currently watching this on uh, i have a twitch i have a joystick instagram though i'm kind of phasing out instagram it really hasn't been all that successful uh, and i also don't get it um kofi i have a kofi if you want to donate to me um i have a throne if you want to help me out with some gifts or like uh just upgrades to things i have a stream loots um my ao3 is where i host all of my writing currently uh i have a fansly and i have a mini vids and you can find all of these links and more at linktree slash dommy wolf that's link tree uh, tr dot ee slash dommy wolf let's get into my content and talk about the various things that i do as a creator we're gonna start with twitch uh, so Twitch is my main channel. It's my primary source of content for the time being. I stream on Twitch three days a week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, typically using Saturday as a collab day. Uh, Sundays are reserved for Dogboy Sundays. We do still do solo streams on Sundays, but mostly Dogboy Sunday is what I focus on for Sundays. Um, subscribers to my Twitch gain access to not just the subscriber section of my Discord, but there's also something else that we're working on now too, uh, which you'll find out later on in the presentation. Um, my overall on Twitch, uh, Twitch is to achieve 100 consistent subscribers. Um, this will be a good step towards me being a full-time content creator and will really help me move away from being a hobby streamer. My goal overall as being somebody who produces content is going full-time and creating alongside my partner, um, being able to move out and all that stuff. That's really what I'm focusing on currently. Uh, YouTube is my secondary channel and it's where you're watching this video right now. I stream on YouTube Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday each week as live. Uh, recently we reached 100 subscribers on YouTube, so thank you guys so much for enjoying my content. I really appreciate it and I hope to provide you more of it. Um, I do two video uh, uploads each week, um, usually VODs from Twitch, sometimes they're custom videos, not too often, um, and three edited shorts made from Twitch clips. Uh, my editors are Mel and Rose and Ebby the Shrimp. They work on YouTube content with me. Um, Ebby uploads some of my videos sometimes, and they help provide me video ideas. My overall goal on YouTube is to become monetized. Um, this will allow me to get much closer to my goal of becoming full-time. I also have a joystick, which is where you'll find um, more of that good kinky dommy content if that's what you're into. Uh, I stream on joystick every other Friday alongside Sheikah Husky, a friend of mine, for our Fetish Friday series. Um, this mostly focuses on lewd games, primarily visual novels, but also discussions between Chica and myself about lewd things. Uh, I'm always looking for more ways to improve Fetish Friday, so if you have any ideas, let me know. Um, my overall goal for my lewd streams is to achieve a consistent average of 20 viewers, and once we do that, we'll be using lewd models, which I will show off later in the stream. Uh, Fansly is my newest undertaking. I just joined Fansly last month. Primarily, is uh, I want to uh, record audios and post them on Fansly. So if you're interested in like audio content, not so much ASMR, um, but things like POV stuff, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, you might really enjoy the stuff that I have on Fansly. Uh, eventually, we're going to be featuring more and more virtual Dommy content, such as uh, JOI videos or BDSM panels and more. And if you have any suggestions on how I can use Fansly, please let me know, because I'm very new to it. Uh, next is Twitter. Um, Twitter is my main interaction platform and currently the bane of my existence. Um, every Sunday on Twitter, I post a new schedule and thumbnails for games that are made by me. Uh, I also post all of my art commissions and more on Twitter too. Uh, if you ever just want to see what's going on with me, you can pretty much check Twitter and figure it out. I post on Twitter constantly, much to my dismay. Um, so it's a good it's a good indication of what's going on uh discord is my primary community interaction um that's where a lot of my subbies are you can always join my discord it's on pretty much every video that i upload i always encourage people to join it especially from different communities um my goal is to have at least 350 members and to see the server become fully boosted once we reach 100 twitch subs uh we will start doing community nights again i would like to start my own minecraft smp where i play with some of my viewers uh or just have minecraft shenanigans 
And we're also introducing a new Discord benefit as well, which is kind of like an ERP server or a server to indulge in more lewd content. And it'll be the first cornerstone of uh, sort of moving towards becoming more of a lewd creator. Um, this is probably going to be out by Sunday, uh, if not next week. So please stay tuned for more information on it. And to conclude, I also have a Streamloots. Streamloots is an interaction platform where you can ask me questions, direct me in games, uh, win cool prizes, or suggest commissions for me. There's a lot of different ways to interact on there. And if you buy five card packs from streamloots.com slash Wolf, uh, I'll even record some custom audios for you. If you're interested in my voice or just a quick way to get an easy Dommy fix, this is a good way to do it. All right, we're done with the content portion. So now we're gonna dive into a bit more about Dommy and learn about who he is. So some of this information might be repeated, just an FYI from uh, the start of this presentation. Uh, so please bear that in mind. But Dominic is a 21 year old scion who's been disinherited from the wolf family legacy and has gone into hiding on the outskirts of Canis. Uh, he's primarily a mercenary contracted with the Canis Vanguard Charter, an organization which serves as uh, the Church of Ortis as a task force to keep Canis City and the larger country of Canis safe. He also creates lewd content on only wands, functions as a leather and latex model for Wolf Magazine, and maintains a status as a fetish performer and owner of the Princess Room. Dominic is a great sword wielder, with no magical affinity whatsoever, though he can make use of dark energy in his duties because his job as a mercenary is expected to Dark Knight. That's sort of a holdover from Final Fantasy XIV, but generally speaking, I do identify Dom with a lot of Dark Knight's uh, themes and ideas and characteristics in other games too. He wields a sword entitled the Vanguard Blade. It's a long, terrified uh, crystalline, crystalline sword which looks like a jagged blade of pure salt, able to be tempered with dark energy and used to create shockwaves and sickle-like blades. Mostly though, he's a dominant submissive, and a performer online, playing video games and dominating partners as they approach. Speaking of partners, Dom has a number of play partners and associates, including a companion by the name of Pup. Pup, a being made of liquid latex and subsisting off of Doberman milk, is one of Dom's many obedient, faithful playmates and primarily serves as a means for my audience to connect more to my content. Dominic also does plenty of training with his dominant Jin. Jin is Dominic's mercenary leader and serves as his primary trainer for most of his missions. Outside of work, Jin and Dom also practice BDSM, and Jim Dom is Jin's loyal submissive. Uh, I mentioned this earlier, but there's a story called To Make an Alpha, which is associated with Dom. Uh, to Make an Alpha is a story started by me in 2021 featuring Defector Dommy, hereby known as Red Dommy, and his partner Turtle's relationship while detailing the overall politics of the country of Canis. Uh, it's largely a lewd piece focusing on BDSM, but it also has themes of action and mystery as well. Um, currently, all of To Make an Alpha is hosted on Archive of Our Own. And there's not too much to it right now, but we are looking to get it started again here in the future. Uh, we have a lot of concepts to create and I have a lot of world building to do. I really didn't expect the story to get as big as it was, um, so I wasn't prepared for that. But that's some of the stuff that we got to do before we can continue it. And that brings us to Dog Boy Sunday. So I mentioned Dog Boy Sunday a couple of times throughout this presentation. It is a uh, event which happens on 4 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, featuring Red Dommy and Turtle. Uh, it's a collaboration event where we play games together, mostly turn-based RPGs at this time. Um, it features specially made outfits, models, and graphics oriented around whatever game we're playing. And uh, one day there might even be a loot edition where Turtle and I play looter games on joystick too. I hope that you'll look forward to that. And that's pretty much it for the lore discussion. I hope that you understand Dommy a little bit better and the content oriented around him now. Uh, we're going to do some quick discussion of future outfit plans now and talk a little bit about the plans I've already used. So here's some of the future outfits that we have for Dom. Uh, on the left, you'll see his casual wear outfit that we hope to bring to model form one day. Uh, next to that is streetwear Dommy, which is a concept my community really enjoyed. Um, to the right of that is Dom's submissive outfit, um, which is one of the loot outfit concepts we have for Joystick. And to the right of that is Dom's dominant outfit, which is another concept we have for Joystick. Some other future ideas include, uh, there's an outfit uh, we call Dog Armor, which is basically just a latex bodysuit combined with some uh, armor inspirations from like turn-based RPGs and stuff like that. Um, 
There is the Mercenary Dommy outfit, which you've seen a couple of times in this presentation. It's the outfit that has the coat uh, with Dom's chest out. Um, there's the Prison Dominant 2.0 outfit, which is my debut outfit that I originally started with. Uh, I have a new made outfit in the works. Um, there's a new version of Dommy's Halloween outfit that we want to do sometime soon. Um, there's a version of a uh, Leather Santa Dommy outfit, which is non-denominational and references the fictional Holiday Borkmas, which is in To Make an Alpha. Um, there is another mercenary outfit design done by Hecate, which you can find on the uh, on the screen there at the bottom. Hecate did the background for this slide, actually. Uh, I wanted in a raffle. They did an amazing job, and you should totally check her out. Um, there's a Detective Dommy outfit, which Hecate designed as well. Uh, there's a 2.0 for Cow Dommy, which is a outfit that I did a stream for for Minecraft, where I um, took multiple VTubers and made them into cows. Uh, there's a Suit Dommy, which is a business suit that we want to design. There is a 2.0 version of Dommy's Spring Idol outfit, which is a huge fan favorite in this community. Uh, and there is a 2.0 version of Summer Dommy, which used to be the banner of this YouTube channel until I changed it. There's also going to be more designs coming from Red Dommy in the near future, too. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that wasn't too long, but you toughed it out, and I thank you. There was a uh, question and answer portion as part of this presentation, um, but I decided to cut that out of this shorter version just because it's more for live interaction. Didn't much make sense to have during a video that I'm recording in. So if you want to check out the question and answer portion, or if you just want to learn more about Dommy, uh, please consider checking out the longer video which I uploaded yesterday uh, featuring questions such as what kind of dogs I like or what got me into VTubing. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and end things here. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the dungeon sometime. Bye, Subby!